Thank you for the opportunity to present our study, as you see entitled uh, Antibiotics and Risk of Nuanced IBD, a Meta-Analysis. Uh, we have no pertinent disclosures. Um, so medications are beginning to emerge as a possible risk, risk factor for IBD. In particular, antibiotics appear to potentially increase the risk of new onset UC and Crohn's disease in certain studies. However, this is not consistent across studies, and there are some studies that show no association. And in addition, we don't have that much information about the risk of particular types of antibiotics and the subsequent risk of uh, increased Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. So because of this conflicting data in the, in the literature, we decided to do a meta-analysis to better understand the association between antibiotics and new onset IBD. So our study had three aims. One, to examine antibiotic use as a risk factor for new onset IBD, Crohn's disease, and UC. Two, to evaluate if the effect of antibiotics was different in adults versus children. And three, to determine if antibiotics of specific classes had different effects on IBD risk. So we followed the Moose guidelines in designing our study. We searched major databases with the following keywords that are listed here. Our inclusion criteria were observational studies that had data about antibiotic exposure prior to a new diagnosis of IBD. And if there was data that was about outcomes of interest to our study that was not present in the published manuscript, we would contact the authors directly to obtain such data. Ultimately, we performed a random effects model to determine overall pooled estimates, and we used the Newcastle Ottawa scale to assess study quality, which has a maximum score of nine. So after we did our search, we ultimately ended up with 11 articles, eight case control, and three cohorts. So these are the eight case control studies you can see published from 2004 to 2012. Um, they had a, a range of quality scores on the right-hand column um, from three to, to eight. Um, most of them were conducted in Europe and Canada, and two of the studies focused primarily on pediatric IBD. These were our three cohort studies, uh, which were published between 2010 and 2012. Two of them focused on pediatric populations, and all of them were of high quality. So in total, we had 11 studies that accounted for over 7,000 patients with new diagnoses of IBD, over 3,000 with Crohn's disease, and over 3,000 with ulcerative colitis. It's important to note that the majority of these studies did account for uh, diagnostic, potential for diagnostic delay. That is, they omitted some time frame prior to the new diagnosis of IBD and did not, account for, did not count those antibiotic exposures um, in their analysis to try to, to, make, to uh, control for potentially treating yet to be diagnosed IBD. So when we pooled all of the studies together, we saw that antibiotic exposure was associated with an increased overall risk of new onset IBD with an odds ratio of 1.54, which is statistically significant. And when we stratified by age, we saw that both adults and children had an increased risk of IBD uh, after antibiotic exposure, with children appearing to have a slightly higher risk with an odds ratio of 1.89, as opposed to adults who had an odds ratio of 1.43. Next, we looked at Crohn's disease specifically. And we found that when you analyze studies that reported data on Crohn's disease, that antibiotic exposure was significantly associated with new onset Crohn's disease with an odds ratio of 1.73. And when we stratified by age of, uh, of onset of disease, <clears throat> adults versus children, children were significantly more at risk for developing Crohn's disease with an odds ratio of 2.7, whereas adults had an odds ratio of 1.6. In contrast, when we looked at ulcerative colitis, and pooled all the results together, we did not see any association between antibiotic use and the risk for a new onset ulcerative colitis. And this held true when we looked by stratifying by age. So next, we looked at specific classes of antibiotics. You can see in this table on the left-hand side, we have specific antibiotics. And in the middle highlighted column, we have the pooled odds ratios uh, from the studies that we included. So basically, all of the antibiotics that, were, that were, we had data for were associated with new onset IBD with the exception of penicillin. And of note, somewhat paradoxically, uh, the two antibiotics that appeared to have the highest odds ratio for new onset IBD were metronidazole and quinolones. So our study did have limita limitations. We used retrospective studies, and some of these studies were survey studies, so they were subject to recall bias. There was a range in the quality of these studies, although when we did a sensitivity analysis looking at only high-quality studies, our results did hold. And there was significant heterogeneity in certain analyses. And it's important to point out that there is a significant difference in the exclusion period prior to new, uh, new onset IBD in these studies. So there's still the possibility that some of these antibiotics were being prescribed for yet-to-be-diagnosed IBD. So in summary, antibiotic exposure appears to increase the odds of new diagnoses of IBD. 
And antibiotic exposure appears to increase the risk of Crohn's disease, but not UC. And this risk appears to be greatest in children. And most antibiotic classes that we were able to obtain data about are associated with IBD, with penicillin being the only one that we had data about that was not associated, whereas metronidazole and quinolones were most strongly associated. So what do we make of this data? Obviously, it's difficult to say anything about causality with this kind of data. However, we think that this information supports two possible hypotheses. One is we know that the microbiome is important in IBD pathogenesis, and it's known that antibiotics can affect the microbiome. So it's possible that these exposures to antibiotics are somehow contributing to alterations in the microbiome that lead to the dysbiosis that's known to be uh, part of the pathogenesis of IBD. Or alternatively, these antibiotics exposures may just be a surrogate marker for something else that is actually being associated with nuanced IBD, for example, some sort of infectious trigger um, or infectious process. So I'd just like to thank you all for your attention and hanging out to the very end of the con conference. And I'd like to thank my, uh, my mentors, Ashisha Treja and John Fred Colin Bell, our co-authors and the CCFA, and my co-fellows who covered me on the awards uh, so I could come to this conference. Thank you. Mm -hmm.